Hey everyone, how's it going? Joe Turner here, Rocky Mountain Horseman. And today I'm working with five-year-old Tennessee walking horse, Zeb. Zeb has been through two trainers already and was deemed untrainable. So he's coming to me for 30 days and we're going to see what we can do. So here I'm going to mount up, but I would like Zeb to be a little bit more balanced over all four feet. So I'm not putting any unnecessary stress or and do weight shifting on him, throw him off balance, kind of throw his bones out of balance, maybe get that spine uh, in a position it should be. So get up, first thing I always do when I get on my horse is love them all over, make them feel good, tell them they're a good boy, good girl, I can think of the best place for me to be in the world is on their back. I'm also gonna check some lateral flexion here. Right there, I'm asking him to lift his head up and get in a more natural position when they drop those ears and lift that nose. It's not natural at all and this is a little bit better on this side but as you can see he's moving around so I'm just gonna hold nice softly lightly ask him to stop all four feet and relax take some a little bit here trying to figure out what I'm asking for realize that my seat my body language my energy is not asking for anything other than just hang out and relax with my buddy bring the head around to the side a little bit you don't need to touch my leg it's not natural I just want you to relax so here I'm asking him to move out a little bit and I'm going to start getting the feet busy as we say. Start giving him a job to do, something to think about. And now one of the things that I found with Zeb is that when you made a left to right transition, right to left transition didn't matter. If he was moving forward and you went to put pressure on those reins at all, he'd instantly want to just stop and start bucking. And so this was a problem, obviously, because I don't like to ride a bucking horse. And unless you're a rough stock rider or a saddle bronc rider or bareback rider, you probably don't like to ride him either. So I worked with him a lot on his forward motion, nothing but forward motion, no reins, nothing. Just get that brain cleared up. You can see him want to stop at times when I am going from the transition left to right or right to left. And you can also see that he really dives in, dives his shoulder here, he just leans in on that inside circle, kind of pushes through that inside leg as we say. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on a lot of leg yielding. really want him to start to give to my leg, not dive those shoulders in. I want him to be well balanced over all four feet. I'm always asking for that, for him to be relaxed, well balanced over all four feet, promoting proper biomechanics. So again, just ask him to move around. I ask him at the trot. I really like the trot. To me, the trot's the best teaching, the best learning uh, speed of the horse. I guess the best learning speed of the horse for the horse. The best teaching is probably the walk. I introduce concept always at the walk, and then I ingrain it, build finesse and fluidity at the trot, a little bit faster of a speed. We've got some more adrenaline going through, some cortisols running through the brain, and just really gives them that ability to get focused even more so so I really like to trot for teaching them a lot of things here I'm just asking him to move forward and just be cognizant of where my legs are where I'm at on him I want his brain to be freed up I don't want him to be thinking about bucking I want him to think forward movement the only time he's gonna buck is when he feels he has no forward mo movement he can't escape he can't get to a place where he's gonna feel comfortable and safe that's when he's gonna buck so I want to recognize that all the little things like how much he swishes his tail, you'll know he swishes his tail quite a bit for a horse. He's very distracted, very irritated uh, with the rider up there. I've already done a chiropractic examination on him and he is good to go with the spine. He's already had vet checkups. There's nothing wrong with this horse physically. Everything with him is definitely a mental aspect. Um, so I'm just going to continue working on that. Sorry about the right side of the screen where you can't see, but I just set my iPhone down and recorded a session that the owners would like to see. So on this back side, this back wall of the round pin here, you'll notice that he has no problems when he's going counterclockwise, where the shrubs on the right side of his body. He can bend around a leg. He, he's really nice through the spine. He's nice and soft. But if we're going clockwise, where the shrubs are on the left side of the body, he instantly wants to push his hip out, and he pushes into any pressure there, and he wants to turn his head to the outside and get real bracy, as we say, through 
this wall back here. So I'm gonna work on him not doing that. I'm gonna work on him being softer and more responsive to my inside leg here. I want him to leg yield. Right there I let him sniff the shrubs a little bit, check it out. He's been in this round pen already. He's had the ability and the time to acclimize and get familiar with the shrubs. There's nothing there. I'm sure there's some weird smells in there that he hasn't been able to just bury his head into and check out. So that's part of the problem here. He's got what we call mental pressure. He's got a mental push and it only seems to be on the left side. It's not on the right side of his body, which as we all know, horses are left and right side and you have to do everything on both sides. So he just has that mental push. He's not real comfortable there. So I want him to focus. I want to push all of that out and focus on me and focus at the task at hand. And so I'm not going to get on him. I'm not going to reprimand him. I'm just going to get his mind to work. I'm building a reset button into him essentially. So every time he does get distracted, no matter what, he can't focus on me. Um, so here I'm just asking him to stop all four feet and relax. You can see those ears go down, the nose goes up. That's not what I'm asking for. I don't reward him there. I'm not yanking and pulling and getting into a fight. Right there, he brought his ears back up and got into more of a natural position and I rewarded him for that. That's really important for me. I always want them to be in a natural position no matter what. I want them to be balanced over all four feet. That way they can perform their job and not be inhibited by the weight of the rider and my improper asking or suggestion of leg aids and cues to get him to do his job. So again, I'm asking for him to yield off the right hand side there and he doesn't want to. And you can see that he gets really, really irritated and it's hard to see on this camera or on this video, but you'll see a couple times where he gets a little humpy in that back end and all he wants to do is buck. That's the first thing that he's been taught to do is if you get irritated enough, if you get scared enough, if you get frustrated enough, buck off the rider because that is going to be the end game. That'll bring the rest and relaxation and that will get rid of any annoying stimulation that's going on. So my job is to teach him that is not the proper thing to do and it's not through punishment. It's by breaking him down mentally before he ever does have that ability to buck. Never bringing him up to that point where he gets frustrated enough to buck and I have to fear whether I'm going to be able to ride him out or not. I want to break him down mentally. So that's what I do. Every time he does start to get frustrated, you'll see I just pull him away and I give him a nice simple exercise that he already knows. That he knows what to do and he doesn't really have to guess too much. When I ask him what 2 plus 2 is, he knows it's 4. And he can tell me it's 4. So when I ask what 2 plus 2 is, and he says 4 when I'm out in the middle of the round pin, then I expect the exact same answer when I'm up against the wall over here. And so that's just what we're working on. For him to have the association that the answers are the same. And that means if my right leg is touching on you, I want you to yield to that leg pressure. If the left leg's on you, yield to that leg pressure. And so here, now it's gonna be right side. He yields fine until he's about 90 degrees perpendicular. And then the front end will start to move over. And that's not what I want. I want the front end to stay still. I want just the back end. Back end movement is all I'm asking for. And if you've been to any of my clinics, you'll recognize this exercise. And you can see that right there, he gets a little hoppy. I was asking for the legs to move to the left off my right leg. And he's pushing into my right leg right there. He's moving into pressure, kicking, swishing his tail, showing that he's irritated with me. And just a second ago, you saw him kick up both those legs as if he's getting ready to kick out, and buck, and get silly. So I just took him off and I reinforced the proper thing to do and reinforced what not to do. So I reinforced him knowing that doing the wrong thing, getting this attitude is not going to be pleasant and I reinforced that pleasantries and comfort and calmness all come with thinking your way through the process. There he goes. 
That was really, really nice. That is the first time that he was able to move off that leg past the perpendicular position without moving that front end, without instantly walking off with that front end. That was a really, really nice effort on his part. And there's another slight effort. He's thinking, do I leave with the front? No, he steps with the rear end. Good. Does take some steps back and starts to leave with that front end. And that's where I reprimand him, just by picking up the rein not doing brutal I'm not being mean I'm just saying hey refocus here and that's what my reprimand is it's not a punishment it's just a reinforcement by asking him to refocus now I'm asking him to go left and move off the left but to the right now I'm asking for right leg on and his body to move to the left I'll go back and forth with this a few times so we can differentiate between the right and the left. You'll see that tail is still swishing and swinging and irritated. Clamp down sometimes. And that's all right. We will get through all of that. So I try to do all this on a nice loose rein. Again, you can see from here, it's all pretty loose. To gather him up for that last exercise, what I like to call the windshield wiper. Moving the horse's body, very similar to the windshield wipers that are on your car. And now he can walk a little better along this fence line right there. That was great. Came right to it, moved the rib cage out away from my leg, up against, became parallel with the fence line and was able to walk through it. That was the best one that he has done all day. And things like that are great to finish on. He had that really difficult time right there, understanding that. So I got him through it and we finished on it. Here I'm just asking for him to back up and you'll see he moves off to the left. I say, no, that's not it. Now I'm asking for straight back. He's moving to his left. I say, no, that's not it. Don't get into a fight with them. Now push the hip to your right. Get off that leg, remember that. Now back it up. There you go, good. I'm always asking for straightness when they're backing. Straightness going forward, straightness when they're backing. And that was nice efforts. Great job on Zeb's part. Good work, Zeb. Thanks for the great ride. Thanks for the good efforts. Well, folks, thanks for joining us. Until next time.